Patrick Vieira is ready to take the next step from Crystal Palace to Arsenal. Two seasons with Vieira in charge saw Palace qualify for the Champions League and now he has the task of rescuing an underperforming Arsenal squad. We're three seasons into the save and at least half of Mikel Arteta's original team have now left with some players staying in England and others moving abroad. Fortunately, there are still some top talents at the club like captain Martin Odegaard, goal scorer Gabriel Jesus, and one of Vieira's former Palace players, Michael Olise. Now, as far as objectives go, I think our primary ambition is to return Arsenal as a top four side, look to win the FA Cup and also win the Europa Conference League, which the club qualified for by winning the Carabao Cup last year. Already we have a budget more than we ever saw at Palace and I fully plan on utilizing it as we try to make our first signing. With David De Gea still being United's number one and seemingly going nowhere, it's time to give Dean Henderson a chance. He's impressed at both the Premier League and Championship level. Now that he's peaked in his potential, I have full confidence in him moving forward. With that said, this was still a great deal as we managed to bring him in for 15 million, which is already 5 million less than what he's worth. We're definitely in need of a right-footed winger to play on the left side for us, and Liga Un continues to be a top destination for Vieira's transfers. Kamaldin Sulemana is a graduate of Ghana's Right to Dream Academy, impressing during his time at Norgeland in Denmark. Saad Rene in France's top flight, and he could very well be one of the most promising talents at this year's World Cup. The only thing stopping him is injuries. It's another pretty sound deal as we only had to pay 30 million, even better than the Henderson deal, 10 million less than his evaluation. Of course, we had to bring in one player from Vieira's old club, and Chris Richards seems to fit in with Arsenal's transfer policy as of late. Austin Trussie and Matt Turner being two of Arsenal's most recent American signings. And although Richards was never quite able to break into the Palace starting 11, he has a lot of upside and he joins us for 20 million. We're also going to bring in Dani Ceballos on a free, who spent two seasons at Arsenal from 2019 to 2021. Still relatively young, I'm surprised Madrid didn't renew his contract, but he'll offer good scores squad depth for us in the midfield. With Palace in the Champions League, they're seemingly trying to add some veteran leadership. Not too sure who this Palace manager is, but I was happy to offload Volan for 22 million, as I'd rather give chances to some of our younger strikers. Along with that, Pablo Mari will be joining Real Valladolid on a 5.5 million transfer. But our Premier League season sees its start against Brentford. Here is the Arsenal starting 11. Still utilizing the 4-2-3-1, with a somewhat risky choice optioning for Salamakers at right back. It is a position he used to play, and I feel like he's too quality to leave out of our squad. With the law on the line, you've got to question if this is the time to be taking risks, but we do end up winning our league opener 3-0 against Brentford at home, Sulemana contributing two of those goals. That win ended up being the only time we secured three points in our first few match days as we open things up in the Conference League. Here's our group. We've got Twente, Jurgardens, as well as Wolfsburger AC, highlighting some of the top talents we just signed Sadilik in our Freiburg rebuild. I know he's a good player. Asoro, you might remember him from his time at Sunderland. And Wolfsburg have some alright players, Toffener being the highest rated at the moment. But we'll check results in January 2025. Sixth place in the Premier League. Top four is very much within reach. As far as Conference League goes, we were equal on points with Jure Gardens, but we will advance as group winners. We have seen some progress in our starting 11 overall ratings, as we still have a relatively young squad. Unfortunately, that decision to start Salamakers at right back just hasn't worked out the development plan taking too much time, so that will be our area of focus in January. Originally starting as a Leon player, Malo Gusto, is a right back that is heavily sought after in the current transfer market. Arsenal, one of the teams that are in the running for him. He's playing for Espanyol in La Liga and they're struggling at the moment. So we're going to go ahead and pay whatever fee they want as we still have a lot left over in the transfer budget. It ended up being a 30 million deal, which was not bad at all. Continuing the trend of signing players for less than our valuation. We're going to continue gradually letting some of the older players that we inherited leave. I thought this was an all right transfer offer for Uri. He's just not starting for us, not even our third choice center back so Real Madrid will pay up 25 million to secure his signature we also saw a pre-contract departure with Granit Xhaka, who's getting up in age. It's unfortunate to see, as I really do like his redemption arc at Arsenal. But a couple months later into the simulation, we have a fixture against Liverpool at the start of March. This happens to be the Carabao Cup final, looking to repeat in this competition for the club. And we did manage to get a 3-1 win. Those two goals coming in extra time, courtesy of Gabriel Jesus and Sambi Lokonga. So no matter what happens moving forward, we can say we secured at least one trophy for the club this season. I still would like to continue making progress in the Conference League, and we have a favorable matchup against Bronby in the round of 16. Gusto seems to fit right into the squad as we have a very balanced starting 11 
As far as top player of Brumby, if you're a longtime watcher of the channel in the Valencia career mode in FIFA 21, you might remember Daniel Vase. But there was really only going to be one outcome. 2-0 in the away leg, 2-0 in the home leg. Seasons advance to the quarterfinals against Lille. Gianluca Busio has actually made the move from Serie B to France, now at an 81 overall rating. But as far as score lines go, a 1-1 draw in the home leg, 4-0 in the away fixture, and we have found ourselves through to the semifinals against Atalanta. A pretty fun and realistic transfer with Gonzalo Ramos making the move from Benfica to Atalanta. But we still secure the 2-0 no result at home. Immediately following that victory, Juve actually offering us the job. I'm definitely not going to be leaving the Arsenal job, but I found it fascinating that they offered us the manager position when they're top of Serie A. But getting right back to the Conference League, we saw another 2-0 outing in the second leg. That means we're going to face Napoli in the Conference League final. It will actually be our final fixture of the season. So we could review some of the other competitions. We did fall a little bit short of City for the Premier League title, but we are comfortably top four, which was the goal. Relegation spots going to Brentford, Bournemouth, as well as Burnley. A fourth round exit in the FA Cup to West Ham with Aston Villa defeating Spurs in the competition final. Sporting somehow managed it all the way to the Champions League final, but Liverpool will get that victory 2-0. Crystal Palace will check in on them, and despite narrowly avoiding relegation in the Premier League, they actually advanced to the knockout stages of Champions League, losing in the round of 16 to Barcelona. Porto will see the win in Europa League against Roma 3-2. But it's time for this Conference League final against a strong Napoli squad. Can we add a second trophy this season? I think there's no question the impact Vieira has had on this Arsenal team. Immediately looking for a younger squad and kind of continuing in the direction that Mikel Arteta left off and the game somewhat ruined with some of their own transfers. But some chances early on off of a set piece. It's Ginter on the far post who's unable to find the back of the net and we're into the second half. Odegaard and Jesus, I would say they are our two top current players at the club. Club. That didn't showcase in this finish from Jesus as his effort is dragged wide. We're going to make a change in the 52nd minute. It's Ceballos being brought on for Sambi Lokonga. And just minutes and moments before the end of regulation, it's our new signing Gusto who really utilizes his defending capabilities and basically tackles the ball into the net. What a way to seal it for a Conference League title. I'm very happy with the outcome as I felt like we dominated the match. We just need to find that opener. Not a bad first season at all for Patrick Vieira. A second place Premier League finish is the highest Arsenal has seen in recent years. And of course, winning two trophies. Jesus with 25 goals across 58 appearances and Odegaard with 22 assists across 60 appearances. Our manager rating comfortably in the green and ready to head into the second season of this Arsenal rebuild. Now that we have some more confidence with Vieira in charge, we're going to switch over to his preferred 4-3-3 formation. That is going to mean some more changes to the squad. I think every year moving forward in this rebuild, we've got to be aiming to win all competitions or at least try to reach the final. As the Champions League is the only competition the board doesn't expect us to win. We've seen another rise in our transfer budget, nearing 250 million. And our first signing is a player that I've been looking to bring in for a while. During my Crystal Palace save, I received a lot of shouts to sign Keprem Thuram, and I think he's the perfect player to occupy the number six role for us. The son of Lilian Thuram, who Vieira played alongside for Les Blues and Juventus, the youngster is quickly becoming one of the most heavily sought after midfielders in the world. The 45 million move is fairly decent considering how versatile he is, just slightly above his current evaluation of 41 and a half million. But we're going to break that rebuild trade to record with our next signing, and it's Enzo Fernandez who a lot of Premier League clubs are disappointed they didn't sign him earlier. He just led River Plate to Benfica, and he's impressing on the highest stage. Liga Portuguesa, as well as Champions League. I would say he's going to play more of a number eight role for us as a box-to-box -box midfielder, and it was quite the transfer fee, 90 million, so we're approaching that nine-digit sum. But money is not going to be an issue as Arsenal are one of the top spenders in the Premier League. We do have a couple of departures though, Salamakers, of course it didn't work out for him at right back and I just don't think he works in our system as a right winger. I think Bayern is a good next destination for him, he'll probably be squad rotational to start with but he might break into the first team in a couple of years time. Ended up being a 30 million move to seal his signature. A few other departures starting with Maitland Niles, I think he deserves minutes wherever he goes so I think Leicester City is a good next destination as he joins for 13.9 million and Omar Rekic will leave to Genoa on a 2 million transfer fee. But a pretty favorable few matchups in the Premier League to start with will begin against Southampton and here is our 4-3-3 formation. 
Two new players in the starting 11, and goals continue to be no problem. 4-1 to one is our first result, and we're going to see a step up in competitions for the Champions League. Tough matchups against Atletico Madrid, decent matchups against Salzburg and Dynamo Kiev. Mo Salah has actually made the move to Atleti a couple of seasons in at an 88 overall rating. Kind of surprised to see Luka Nets at Salzburg, but he's at an 81 overall. And Popov, a longtime career mode favorite at an 80 overall rating for Dynamo Kiev. Let's see how we've done January 2026, and we continue to solidify our place as top four in the Premier League. Nine points off of Liverpool for that top spot. And for Champions League, we will once again finish top of our group. Points pretty evenly distributed, but we were by far the best team. It's a very different vibe heading into January this year. I don't think we need to improve the squad at all. Rather, just letting a couple of players go like Pepe. Things just didn't work out for him. It wasn't long ago that he was the club's record arrival from Nice. And I wish him all the best over at Leverkusen. But a round of 16 matchup in the Champions League will be against Leipzig. That is actually the club that Ramsdale left for. So I'm hoping that we can get a few goals by him. 2-0 in the first leg, 2-0 in the away leg. And then I'll see us face Juve, the club that offered us a job just last season. And they actually have signed one of our former players that we managed at Crystal Palace in Hussein Awa. A favorable scoreline in the first leg, 3-2, but Juve see redemption in their away fixture. We lose at home at the Emirates. And I've got to say, all things considered, it was not a great second season here at Arsenal. A second place finish once again, five points short of Liverpool for the Premier League title. Brighton, Watford, and West Brom will be earning the relegation spots. United winning the FA Cup against Leicester City, two to one, and the Carabao Cup this year going to Aston Villa. Juve ended up going all the way to the Champions League final and defeat Inter, three to one. The Europa League going to Spurs as they defeat Nice, and the Conference League title, will be earned by West Ham as they beat Ajax in the final. There were still some highlights this season though. Gabriel Jesus just one goal off of the Premier League record that may even be broken by Erling Haaland this year. And for assists, it's Zinchenko from the left back position, going up plus two in his overall and accumulating 11 assists from 45 appearances. We've got one other departure with Runersen. I don't think he's getting playtime anytime soon, so we'll let his contract expire. But our manager rating on the brink of getting sacked. Hopefully we can improve in season three. The best teams are ones that are able to respond in adverse moments, and I'm hoping that this current group is capable of that. Not too much of a let off from the board. We don't necessarily need to win the Premier League title, but we need to basically reach the latter stages of all competitions. Our transfer budget also the same. And I don't think I need to speak much about our first signing. William Saliba immediately impressed upon his return back to Arsenal. A couple of seasons out on loan in Liga 1. Helped his development and now he's up to an 86 overall rating and deserves to be playing for some of the world's best teams. 75 million was the finalized transfer fee. Not bad a couple of seasons into career mode and only 20 million or so more than his current evaluation. There have been a few transfer links between Arsenal and Tariq Lamptey in recent seasons. And now that the club has been relegated to the championship, the timing is perfect to finalize this deal. He'll offer a squad depth at the right back position and another option to Gusto. When clubs get relegated, you can usually pick up their players on a decent transfer fee. That was very much the case here. 25 million is 11 million less than Lamptey's current evaluation. Etienne Green of Sa Etienne can boast one of the best player names at a club. And since the team is struggling in France's second division, he'll be the perfect backup keeper for us at Arsenal. Usually don't see too many English keepers playing abroad. So I think a move to the Premier League is on the cards. And for 17.5 million, this is just what we need. A young goalkeeper that that can maybe take over for Henderson in a few years time. Thomas Uchek played an integral role for us in season one, but not so much the case last year. So I was all right with letting him leave here in season three. Byron again come through with a transfer offer and they ended up paying 32.5 million to bring in Suchek. And we'll start our season against Burnley. Again, some all right matchups in our first month and our team continues to get stronger and stronger. We again start our season with a victory and we'll turn our attention to the Champions League group stage. We've got Milan, Stade Rene, as well as Sparta Praha. Top players, Lucas Paqueta has had an interesting career as he was at Milan not too long ago before making the move to Liga 1. Of course, he's now in the Premier League and he's back at Milan. So we'll sign signed for Stade Rene and for Sparta Praha. They do have Adam Karabek at an 81 overall. We've been pretty solid at the halfway mark each season and that will again 
again be the case here in Season 3. Third place in the Premier League, 9 points off of City for the top spot. And again, topping the group stage. 15 points from 6 matches played, not too shabby. And despite the stamina issues, our squad is in good shape. We are going to see a number of departures here in January. A lot of these are older players that for the most part, are not playing a huge role for us. Zinchenko being the only exception, but I think a Real Madrid move was too good for him to pass up on. But we'll get into the round of 16, starting against PSG in the knockout stages. They have brought in Ajax wonder kid Kenneth Taylor, who's up to an 85 overall. 2-0 in the first leg, though, and we again see another cup final here at the end of February. It's again going to be the Carabao Cup, which we won in season one. We've got Everton this time, and we will see a victory in this competition. So a little bit of a boost in our morale and confidence as we continue in the Champions League. It's a good thing we won the first leg against PSG because we lost the second leg, but we're still through to the quarterfinals, now facing Liverpool. Always a strong side in Kermud, but they have gone ahead and signed another one of our former players, Nani Madueke, who's up to an 87 overall. 1-1 one, one in the first leg, and a player injury with Badia Shile, our starting left center back, out for the next fixture. I think that made a difference because Liverpool were able to put three by us. We did not respond on the attacking front, so we'll again see an exit from the Champions League. Still some potential redemption, though, as we have the FA Cup final coming up against Newcastle. It's a match that we need to win because we have not yet secured Champions League football. So if we somehow fall out of the top four, I want to win as many trophies as possible and maybe save our job for another season. Of course, a familiar face at Newcastle United. I'm surprised that Saka hasn't moved away to a bigger club, but it will make for a very interesting fixture and a great storyline for this match. We'll get into the highlights though, as Domsgaard does set up Saka and a good save from Green, who I gave the nod to start in this FA Cup final. He impressed early on, and it's a mistake from the Newcastle player. Shaparenko being sent off with a straight red just 19 minutes into this one. So Newcastle playing at a man disadvantage, and we need to try to make the most of that with Gabriel Jesus. 34th minute gets his effort blocked, and we are continuing here. Just before the halftime break, Newcastle were not giving up. They tried their best to keep possession, and a little bit of luck falling their way as Oliver Torres has its effort go off the post right back to him, and he will score the first goal of the match. Just a few moments after the break, it's Jesus again in a great position, finding the right cross, but it was their keeper who was quick off his line, and unfortunately, we just did not respond here in the next 45 minutes. It's Newcastle who somehow sneak away with a 1-0 victory, a big moment for their fans as the club continues its rise up English football. Saka right in there with the celebrations. A great moment for him, a disappointing one for us. Now our focus has to be on the Premier League. Two fixtures remain. I think we just need three points to secure our spot in the Champions League. We didn't get that against Newcastle as we only got a draw, and a loss against Aston Villa had me worried. But as we review results, we somehow kept our fourth place spot in the Premier League. You can actually look at the standings and the goal differential. Had we lost by another goal against Aston Villa, we would have actually dropped a fifth and they would have overtaken us. A sad day for Crystal Palace as they see relegation to the championship alongside Southampton and Fulham. It's Barcelona to defeat Liverpool in the Champions League, West Ham to beat Atletico Madrid in Europa League, and finally Bayer Leverkusen getting the win against Real Batiste in the Conference League. Gabriel Jesus now into his 30s continues to grow in his rating, up plus two to an 89 overall and 28 goals across 61 appearances. Odegaard, 15 assists from 58 appearances, and a couple of exits from the club with Matt Turner with his contract expiring along with Ayhan Munoz, who's pretty much played a rotational role for us in the entirety of the rebuild. Manager rating somehow has seen a rise to a 56, so I don't think our job is in danger, at least at the start of the season. Maybe this is the year that we find the missing piece of competitions that we've fallen a little bit short of, but I think the board is starting to lose patience as we need to win it all. Win the Premier League, win the FA Cup, and win the Champions League. We have seen a rise in our transfer budget up to $350 million, and we're going to make our first signing out of necessity because the players I wanted to bring in, such as Gonzalo Inacio of relegated Southampton, was not able to move because he's too important to the club. So I figured why not bring back a former Arsenal player, youth academy player as well with Emil Smith Rowe. He hasn't moved away from Monaco, which is a bit surprising to me because I haven't seen all that much from them so far in this rebuild. And I think it says something when you can add a player who's already familiar with our system here at Arsenal. 
ended up being a hundred million pound move to finalize the deal. It's just what we had to pay considering his evaluation is close to 80 million. You might remember Luca Nets from a few years back when we competed against Salzburg in the Champions League group stage. Well, he's still at the club and I think it's time for him to move on to a top five league. Arsenal, to be fair, have a pretty strong transfer history with German players. One of my all time favorites being Lucas Podolski back in the day. 50 million was the finalized fee, just a small dent in our overall transfer budget and not too much more than his evaluation of 38 million. Our final signing of the summer is going to be another former Palace player that we were managing with Eze. He was one of, if not the first signing that Vieira made when he embarked on his journey at Palace. So why not add a little bit of extra squad depth for us here in the midfield? He's probably not going to be a starter, but I'm familiar with what he can offer. And for 15 million, he's going to give us exactly what we need as added cover. We did receive a big transfer offer from Gusto and it's 117.4 million from Barcelona. Obviously we're able to bring that fee up a little bit more and with Gusto being one of the best right backs in the world, Barca were willing to pay 150 million to establish his signature at time at the club. One other departure, Marquinhos is leaving to Bayern, actually the third one of our players to go to the club. But hopefully we can go four for four as far as Premier League openers go, our first match against Nottingham Forest. And here is the starting 11. I'm not too concerned with the players that left because we've got Lamptey at an 86 overall, not bad for a replacement right back. And we were able to convert that to a two to one victory in our opener. If we can find success in the Champions League or Premier League, I would call that a win this season. Our group stage this year has Roma, PSV, and Copenhagen. Top players at Roma include Jogo Jota, who made the move from Liverpool. At PSV, Cody Hakpo is somehow still at the club. I don't know how they've managed to do that. And a player that I deemed as the next Vieira in Aurelian David has actually moved to Copenhagen. I tried signing him but he was too important to the club. January 2028, we'll see how results have gone and we are again top four, but well off of that top spot in the Premier League. Spurs occupying the first place position and we again finished top of our Champions League group. So we've got that going for us and it seems to be the way to go if we want to lift some silverware this season. Although we've got the budget, I think we've got the quality already in this Arsenal team. So no further signings this year and we'll get right into the round of 16 against Marseille. The French side has actually brought in an American striker in Ricardo Pepe. He's progressed quite nicely in this save to an 83 overall and we were able to get a 1-0 victory in the away leg. One went home with Pepe scoring the late goal, but we're through to the quarterfinals against Juve, a team that has given us a lot of trouble so far in this rebuild and that continues. 3-2 in the away fixture and a 2-2 draw at home. Means we're going to see an earlier than anticipated exit from the Champions League. And now our job is in danger. One final Premier League match will be against Leeds. As we get the simulations going, you can see we get the win, but the board were not hesitant to give us the sack immediately upon the end of the year. I find it hard to believe considering we were in the running for all competitions basically every season, but it is what it is. And I think for the time being, we are going to close the door on Patrick Vieira's time on the channel. With that said, I am interested in doing some other manager career modes with either real players or real managers so if you have any suggestions leave that in the comments leave a like if you enjoyed the video subscribe if you're new around here but until next time this has been flick i'll be talking to y'all again soon